We have this story from Metro News, West Virginia. Explosive devices reported at two locations in Bluefield. There were no injuries after the discovery of two explosive devices in Bluefield on Monday morning. West Virginia State Police, the Bluefield Police Department, and other law enforcement responded to a call at the federal courthouse in downtown Bluefield around 9.40 a.m. Officers evacuated all people from the building and, it, uh, and an adjacent apartment building as they dealt with the device. Apparently, they detonated police yell fire in the hole before a loud boom was heard. It was destroyed around 1140 inside the federal building. An explosion was heard from the building. Another device was found at, uh, I believe it's down here, Westminster Presbyterian Church in Bluefield, West Virginia. Bomb squad has arrived. So uh, the reason I thought this was, you know, this, this story caught my eye and it's not really getting a lot of attention is someone planted a bomb at a federal courthouse. I mean, we saw in, in 2020, the riots with the far left, they were attacking the federal courthouse in Portland. And then I saw it was West Virginia and West Virginia is MAGA country. You know, it's, it's the second most Trump supporting state in the United States. So I wondered who or why would someone do this? Entirely possible. It's an isolated incident pertaining to local matters. And it's only getting national attention because of the tensions and the conflicts that's been happening at the federal level or with the FBI, for instance. So we don't know for sure. Uh, entirely could be local conflict. Uh, or it could be, I mean, w- I'll, just, I'll just throw it out to you guys. What political ideology would attack a federal courthouse and a church? Well, I've been on high alert since Dugan's daughter. We might talk about this more later. That's the next one we're going okay. to. His and that, daughter that's why was I'm killed sorry. in a car bomb. So there's this bombing theme in the last five days. All of a sudden, I'm very concerned about false flags. This could have been an, an someone from another country that wants to instill agitation in the in the people's minds. I and that, that it's a church and a courthouse. Like I think Tim, two different saying, buildings about a mile apart. Yeah, like you don't have far right religious zealots bombing churches Mm -hmm. ever really i mean so that doesn't make it doesn't seem like uh i am very hesitant to start blaming groups or ideologies for this because it could be anybody that wants to see chaos in the united states could be doing stuff fog of war man yuri bezmanov yeah i i remember in the 1970s there were a lot of environmentalist extremists who bombed federal buildings or uh federal lands the there is a suspect in custody. He's uh, his name's Dean Fowler. He's fifty years old. There's not. I haven't made, had a chance to look into him too intensely. I mean, there is the instinct, and I hesitate to tie it to any specific group, although it's incredibly disruptive. Um, but there's also a chance someone had something personal. I was saying before the show that I wonder what uh, what was on the docket in the courthouse that day, um, and we looked it up. The church and the uh, federal building are about a mile apart. So there's a question of like why those two places because there's Roe if, v. Wade. Roe v. Wade. SCOTUS. I mean, there's anything. church. Or he knows a lawyer who was practicing and he's mad at the priest down the street. Like it's very hard to tell without right. a ton of information. Th- that, f- first and foremost, the most important thing. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's, it's small town West Virginia. So strong possibility guy you know a, 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 the priest and his neighbor got into a fight they mm-hmm. have a court hearing for some reason i don't know it's a federal court so that doesn't make sense actually yeah there's no reason why a local dispute would go to a federal court it could be someone from outside the state who had a dispute with this guy and it was being sued interstate so it's federal it's possible but i gotta say the memes i all see i see all right now are roe v wade the federal courts the supreme court the, the, the federal court of this country the big one why would someone go after a church in a federal court Simple solution hypothesis, not saying we have any evidence of this, is is left wing. Yeah. I mean, it, it's typically not. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's, it's scary stuff considering the escalation we've seen uh, around the world and the United States. My first thought was when uh, the news broke that it was a federal courthouse, that they were going to start saying it was Trump supporters because of the FBI, because they're going after Trump. And because this judge, this, this, uh, this federal judge in Florida, is an Epstein lawyer. I don't know if you're familiar with this guy, right? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I've read the stories. Yeah. And so I was thinking, like, maybe this is, you know, like the guy in Ohio. But then they found, okay, and they said we found, one, we found one at a church. And I'm like, okay, now that doesn't make sense. Like, a Trump supporter is not going to put a bomb at a church. That's that They donate to the church, you know, if they were going to do anything. Right. And so then I saw, you know, I saw these memes on Facebook, and they're calling it Rovember. They're saying Rovember. Roe v. Wade, November. Go out and vote November. Democrats, Roe v. Wade, the federal courts, the churches, the religious people. And I'm wondering if this is just more likely to be, at the very least, not saying we have evidence, but left-wing radicalization and, and, and attacks. Why would it happen in literal MAGA country, though? It's just, it's just weird. 
I mean, it's a sign of uh, disruption. West Virginia is such an interesting state because it does have such a a tie to the Democratic Party. It was a Democratic stronghold for a long, long time. And so I think that native West Virginians, while they are often MAGA supporting, um, it's a more complex state than people give it credit for because they ultimately like every county in the state went for trump um i do say like it's very hard to tell i wouldn't be surprised at all if this had uh left-wing ties and again i would really like to know what was going on in the courthouse today the church is what's interesting to me because it feels more personal again a mile away a 20-minute walk that means that you could have probably i mean it's west virginia there are probably four other churches within the vicinity why the presbyterian one why that one specifically and again that goes back to it being specific to, ch- to that community you want to look you can look yeah no i mean this is the thing i can't reconcile right uh, a, a local dispute with a local church but a federal courthouse there wouldn't be a suit at the federal courthouse maybe uh the someone at the church ratted out a guy and it's a, it's a criminal matter i honestly don't know they said that the suspect who's in custody is going to undergo evaluation so they might be arguing that there's some sort of psychological disturbance like but again, this is a anybody who's and putting a bomb anywhere is a, have a functioning right. bomb. They had to detonate this, and they didn't go in and say like, "Oh, this doesn't work" or "It's fake." Like they had to destroy it. Is there knowledge about what the explosive was? Sometimes that can help you discern yeah. who did it. They didn't say. I haven't seen anything. But obviously, there's a reason why I bring this up. Civil War, right? Is this? Uh, you know, I, I, how, how old are you, uh, Joe? Can I ask? I am. You can ask. Yeah, you, you don't seem that ask. Old. I'm 43 years old. Hey, not that old. Yeah. Are you? I, really? yeah. oh, okay. You look so much. 79, baby. <laughs> what what month? Your birthday. <laughs> yeah, you too, dude. What month? I was born in December. Okay, April. Yeah. Okay, I was talking to a guy who was in his 60s, and he said that he was uh, just a couple of years shy of getting drafted into Vietnam. Mm-hmm. And then I said, so you saw all the news reports about the weather underground. And he's like, oh, yeah. And then I was like, is it worse now or was it worse then? He says, way worse now can't believe it. That's the mm. media. A lot of it is because of the media, because one bomb in central, you know, West Virginia now is global no, like notoriety, whereas in the 70s, it was like, good luck if you read about in the paper the next day. Maybe. It was more regional, and that could be it. And that's one of the things he pointed out. He said, the issue is that everything's instantaneous these days. Mm. You know, back then something would happen. It would take a while for people to find out about it and react to it, whether that's an escalation or just, the, you know, generally learning about it. And so I think that's the important point. In the 70s with the weather underground, something happens. When did you learn it happened, right? Three days later, maybe it happens on a Friday. You don't watch the news until Monday. And then the Monday mm-hmm. news report comes out. And you're like, huh, today it's the moment it happens. Mm-hmm. The moment this story hit, like I'm, I'm seeing it. I mean, granted, it's my job. But for people who are on Twitter, you're learning about it right away. I think that actually does mean it's worse, though. You know why? If it took a week, I mean, you go back to the revolutionary period. If it took a month or two months for someone in a different state to find out that someone got shot in a different state, they could not react to it or escalate because they didn't know it happened. But now with social media and with instant communications, the moment it happens, you you see a protest, right? Like you get a video of a dude being beaten by cops. Hour later, Black Lives Matter is out on the street protesting. That wasn't that would be possible without the internet, without cell phones. Before before even before um, even when we had cell phones. That wouldn't have happened. It was only after the iPhone made it possible for people to pull up Facebook and see community organizing instantly did we start seeing that kind of phenomenon. Phenomenon. So it could be 2007. Some cop beats a guy. Protests don't show up until the next day because people go home, get on the computer, then learn about it, then show up the next day. Today, mass text, texts go out. So I'm wondering if our tolerance for violence is going down and it's not necessarily, I, I think violence is, getting, is, is, is up, obviously, murders are way up. But I'm wondering if relative to political conflicts, it's not as much violence that will trigger a civil war, civil conflict, or something like that. I, 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 it's a very interesting conversation. I think it's, it's, I'm calloused to this stuff. I've become calloused. Uh, I see it, it doesn't hurt as bad. I don't immediately believe that guy's the villain because I think I saw him punch him. Like, I don't know what's going on. But the downside is when you're calloused, you, don't, you can't really feel. I can't feel it. It's not, it's not making me snap to attention, maybe like it should be. Um, the downside is people are gonna go nuts faster. The upside is people can mobilize faster if there's a real emergency, like a, some sort of flood or whatever. Uh, there are, just to tie this up, 
10 close 10 churches closer 10. uh to the courthouse than the westminster presbyterian church yeah. which is actually a little bit far like interesting farther away uh, sorry to me sounds like some local no drama. that's a good point though mm -hmm. but why, why a federal courthouse maybe somebody who works at the courthouse or, or lives to, locally to be to disruptive church, i mean the, yeah. i think you're still right that it could be tied to ideology and they know they have access to a federal courthouse in their town um earlier i pitched like well we have to see how far the church is because what if the church is outside so when you evacuate the building people come outside and it's even more of a dangerous situation um i think when we just to tie it up back to what you're saying with the news cycle i think that these moments that feel like breaking news you know for us because we're watching the news it is really interesting and for some people they'll remember it but they won't start to pay attention until there's a pattern, until there's another yeah. federal courthouse in another small town mm -hmm. in another part of America. And then it will start to seem like, oh, wait, is something going on? And at that point, we really have to ask ourselves, like, are we too late? Are we missing something that's really significant that's going on? One, one of the mistakes people make is when you hear stories about small rural towns being you know, targeted in this way for whatever this was, they say, well, it's probably not political because why would they come to this small town? And it's like, okay, you know, that's one way to think about it. But we have seen Antifa go to small towns. We have seen riots in small towns. And the, the, the idea behind that is in order to inflict maximum terror, if you're engaged in political violence, you have to go to small towns because people feel safe when they're far away from the cities. Mm -hmm. If the riots and the attacks are happening in small towns, so that was the logic around why far left extremists were, were going to these towns. It's the logic behind why a terrorist would attack a small town to make sure that everyone feels terrified of it. But I don't know. I mean, either way, this looks like terror. It was at a courthouse. I think that instantly qualifies it. A church, possibly, but a church could be, I, I suppose both could be personal, like a guy didn't like an employee at either of these places, but who knows? Thanks for checking out this segment from the TimCast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.